Hi guys and welcome to Barrel Data Science. So in the last video you seen how to write a pretty basic airflow DAG. It fetched the current daytime from the terminal, parsed it and saved it to a local CSV file. Today we'll shift into higher gear and extensively work with the Postgres database. You'll see how to get data from the database, run SQL queries and how to insert a CSV file into the database. It will be a mini ETL pipeline of sort, which is a term every data engineer comes by daily. If you enjoy this type of content and want to see more Airflow videos, please consider giving this one a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. So without much ado, let's dive straight in. We'll use the Iris dataset today. It's relatively small, but it will suit our needs perfectly. Download it from the URL in the video description in a CSV format and save it somewhere you'll remember. Let's say to a desktop. OK, and now open a database management system in which you have Postgres connection established. In here we'll create a couple of tables and load in a CSV file. First we'll create a table that will hold the Iris dataset. Let me run it. And once the table is created, we can now load the Iris CSV dataset into it. I'll copy the command. And you should make sure to make appropriate changes where applicable. You'll certainly have to change the file path and potentially a column names if you decide to name your differently. Let me run it. Okay, and 150 rows were copied. Our data pipeline will load data into Postgres on the last step. The target table will have the identical structure as the Iris table minus the ID column. Because of that, we can use the create a select SQL statement to copy the structure without the data. Okay, and I can run it. And finally, let's verify the data was copied to the Iris table. And also we can check that the target table is empty. And that's all we need to do on the database end, but there's still one step to go over before writing the DAG and that's setting up a Postgres connection in Airflow. So let's do that next. Before proceeding, you should kill the Airflow web server and scheduler if you have them running, because we have to install Airflow's Postgres provider package. I'm in a new terminal window, so I'll copy the installation command. And once done, we can start both the web server and the scheduler. So that's the web server and now Airflow Scheduler, also in the daemon mode. Okay, and we can now open Airflow and navigate to Admin Connections. And we can click on the plus button to add a new connection. I'll give it an ID of Postgres DB. For connection type, I'll choose Postgres. Description, I'll leave it blank this time. Host is localhost. My database name is dbtest. It's my username and I'll enter the password. Okay, and port is the default one. And now I can click on save. We're not done yet. We'll also add a variable under admin variables that will hold the location for the process CSV file. I'll name it temp iris csv location and for the value I'll give it slash temp iris processed that csv and I'll hit save. Okay, we're now done with the entire preparation. This is the meat and potatoes of today's video. We'll split the egg into multiple manageable chunks so you don't get overwhelmed. We'll start with the imports and the boilerplate code and then start working with Postgres. So the code you see on the screen imports everything we need from Python and Airflow. It also declares a DAG with the ID of Postgres DB DAG, which is scheduled to run once per day. We'll now implement each of the four tasks separately and explain what's going on. The first task of our DAG will get the data from the Postgres database. It's not as straightforward of a task as you would assume. We won't use the Postgres operator, but instead, We'll call a Python function through the Python operator. 
The task will call the getIrisData function and will push the return value to Airflow's hexgums. The getIrisData function leverages the Postgres hook, which is a way to establish a connection to a Postgres database, run a SQL command and fetch the results. The entire table is fetched and then pushed to Airflow's hexgums. As you can see, this is the SQL statement will run. This is a Postgres hook in which you can uh, place the ID of the connection. This is the database name. And now from here, you get the connection, get the cursor, run the statement and fetch the results. And that's it for the first task. And we can now test it for the terminal. Let me clear it. And you can see that the RS table is printed to the console as a list of doubles, which is exactly what we want. Let's process it next. Processing the RS dataset should feel familiar if you're ever a Pandas user. We'll declare yet another Python operator that calls the process iris data function. The function retrieves a list of tuples from Airflow of XCOMS and creates a Pandas data frame of it. Let's put it below. You can see it gets the data here and, converts, and converts it to a pandas data frame. Then for the processing part, only rows that match our four criteria are kept and the filter data frame is saved to a CSV file without the ID column. We are getting the CSV location through the earlier declared airflow variable. That's all for the second task, so let's test it. The test was marked as success. The CSV should be stored at temp iris process, so let's print the file from the terminal. Only three rows and the header were kept, which indicates the preprocessing step of the pipeline works as expected. Let's move to the third task. Our DAG is executed daily, meaning every day three rows will be inserted into a table in the Postgres database. We don't want duplicates over time, so we'll truncate the table before insertion. The third task used the Postgres operator to establish a connection to the database and run the SQL statement. And the SQL statement is specified under the SQL argument. Let's test it to see if there are any issues. The test succeeded without any issues, so we can move to the next one. And finally, we want to load the process data into, into the table. We'll use the bash operator to do so. The bash operator will run a shell command which is specified under the bash command argument. The one will run is quite long so I decided to split it into multiple lines. Make sure to replace these two with your database name and database user. And you can see from the command it uses Postgres SQL to run a command which is basically to copy uh, to the RS target table from the CSV file. And for the delimiter we've used the comma sign and the CSV file has a header. So let's see if it works. It looks like the test succeeded and the three rows were copied to the table. To finish the DAG, we'll connect the test at the end of the file. So first we get the data and then process it and then truncate the table and load it from the CSV file. We'll next take a look at how to run the DAG through Airflow. Once you open Airflow's homepage, you'll see that the Postgres database DAG is listed. So let's turn it on. We can now open it and click on the play button to run it. All of the tests should become dark green after a couple of seconds, indicating that they finished successfully. Let's verify the data was inserted by running a SQL query in our database management system. We can see that three rows were inserted, which represent the flowers that match the filtering criteria. And that's it, the DAG runs without issues, so let's call it a day at this point. Airflow's primary use case is orchestration and not necessarily extracting data from databases. Still, you can do it with hooks. Today we explore how to work with hooks, how to run SQL statements and how to insert data into SQL tables, all of that with Postgres. You can easily apply the same logic to different databases. The changes in the DAG would be minimal. 
as a homework assignment, you could try to insert a pandas data frame directly to Postgres without saving it to a CSV file first. That's something we'll cover in the upcoming videos, so stay tuned if you can find a solution. If you like this video and want to see more, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to Better Data Science. It really helps the channel a lot. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.